Hello everyone, this is Dr. Mongli here. Today's question is about uh, oxidation of fatty acids. So the oxidation of fatty acid, one of the fatty acid that is uh, given here, so it is shown in the question. So the question goes something like this. Oxidation of the following fatty acids occurs in which one of the following sites and what are the predominant products formed by the oxidation of the fatty acid that is shown here. So the first job here is to identify what kind of fatty acid is this one is. So the fatty acid shown here as you can see there it has got a carboxyl side and it has got a methyl end on the other side. Now if you count the number of carbons here so it has number one carbon, number two, number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 carbon and then 17, 18, 19 and 20 carbon. So this is a 20 carbon fatty acid and there are four branches in this particular fatty acid. So if you recall a branched chain fatty acid, this is basically a branched chain fatty acid and if you recall a one branched chain fatty acid that you have studied and that is a phytonic acid. So basically the fatty acid that is given here is a branched chain fatty acid and that is a phytonic acid. So oxidation of phytonic acid that is the question here. What all the predominant products formed from phytonic acid oxidation? Choices A to E gives different options here but to, just to give you a brief review on this phytonic acid oxidation so let's go back, uh, go to the proper oxidation of fatty acid little bit in brief there. So the oxidation of branched chain fatty acid will be going on in peroxisomes initially. Peroxisomes they will process the phytonic acid by alpha oxidation process and then once it reaches 8 to 10 carbon molecules so it will be sent to mitochondrial matrix for further oxidation. It means to oxidize phytonic acid, peroxisomal alpha oxidation and then beta oxidation has to occur and then in the mitochondria beta oxidation has to go on. Ultimately we are going to get propionyl CoA and acetyl CoA. Going with that so the option C here that is phytonic acid, peroxisomal alpha and beta oxidation mitochondrial beta oxidation and propionyl CoA and acetyl CoA oxidation makes an answer. Having said that, so let's move on to see how exactly phytonic acid is oxidized from where we get phytonic acid and how the processing occurs and what all the products that we get from oxidation of phytonic acid. So, I have written a phytonic acid structure here. So phytonic acid has got uh, 20 carbons and it has got um, four branch points. Now how do you get phytonic acid in the first place? So the phytonic acid we get from oxidation, basically the fermentation of chlorophyll. Chlorophyll, especially this happens in uh, ruminant animals like cows. So the grass they, that the cows eat, so it has got chlorophyll and the chlorophyll it will be converted, it means it will be fermented by the bacteria present in cows, rumen and that is in the intestine. So chlorophyll will be converted to phytol and the phytol will be oxidized into phytonic acid and this phytonic acid it will be absorbed and it will become part of the fatty acid known as the triacylglycerol or the adipose tissue or the membrane of these uh, cows. So whenever we eat a uh, meat coming from uh, basically the cow's meat or maybe the milk and milk products. So the milk and milk product or the ruminant meat, so ruminant animals meat. So that has got high concentration of phytonic acid. On an average, a non-vegetarian, western non-vegetarian diet, so it has got around 50 to 100 milligram of phytonic acid compared to vegetarian diet. So in, it means non-vegetarians will have more phytonic acid than vegetarians. Okay, having said that, once phytonic acid becomes part of our body and whenever this phytonic acid has to undergo oxidation, so 
fight you generally the normal oxidation process that has that we have for long chain fatty acids is beta oxidation it means the beta carbon will undergo oxidation and every cycle of beta oxidation you get acetyl coa to carbon molecule now in order to in order for phytonic acid to undergo beta oxidation there is a problem here and the problem is first carbon is the carboxyl carbon second carbon is alpha carbon and the third carbon is the beta carbon here as you can note that beta carbon has got methyl group and that's an hindrance for beta oxidation process that's why beta oxidation do not go on here so phytonic acid oxidation will have to be it has to occur in the peroxisomal matrix and that will be done by phytonic acid hydroxylase enzyme what this phytonic acid hydroxylase enzyme does is phytonic acid hydroxylase it's going to add hydroxyl group to alpha carbon and later this alpha carbon it will be converted to carboxyl group it will be oxidized to carboxyl group it becomes carboxyl group here alpha carbon and the bond between first and second carbon it will be broken and the car original carboxyl group here this carboxyl group it will be released as carbon dioxide and now because of this the numbering will change because you are released one carbon as carbon dioxide you are 20 carbon fatty acid phytonic acid now it will be converted to what is called as pristanic acid phytonic acid is converted to pristanic acid that's a 19 carbon fatty acid now the numbering changes because one of the carbon you have removed here so the second carbon becomes the first carbon and the third carbon becomes second carbon now now the first carbon that is a carboxyl carbon second carbon is an alpha carbon and the third carbon this will be beta carbon so that's what i have written here so this is the alpha carbon and here is the beta carbon below here this is what is pristinic acid so alpha carbon and the beta carbon now the beta carbon is free here so beta oxidation regular beta oxidation can go on so and that's what happens so the regular beta oxidation will go on and you will get a 3 carbon propionyl coa in the first beta oxidation spiral now the second beta oxidation spiral will go on and that will give rise to 2 carbon acetyl coa in the third round so beta oxidation will go on and you get a 3 carbon propionyl coa when this molecule pristinic acid is undergoing this beta oxidation spirals releasing propionyl coa acetyl coa and propionyl coa so when molecule reaches 8 to 10 carbons at that time it will be transferred to mitochondrial matrix for regular beta oxidation so in the mitochondria beta oxidation will continue and release acetyl coa to carbon molecule next spiral it will release propionyl coa and next spiral it will release acetyl coa and in the last spiral you are going to get four carbon molecule and that is isobutyryl coa so it means you are going to get from the pristinic acid so i am writing the product that you get from pristinic acid oxidation you get three molecules of propionyl coa three propionyl coa you get three acetyl coa and one isobutyryl coa and later isobutyryl coa ultimately it will be converted to propionyl coa so it means 3 plus 1 propionyl coa so overall at the end of it all 3 propionyl coa one uh, 3 acetyl coa and one isobutyryl coa and one isobutyryl coa ultimately it will be converted to propionyl coa overall we'll get four propionyl coa and three acetyl coa from oxidation of phytonic acid and we get two carbon dioxides there okay one carbon dioxide conversion of phytonic acid into pristinic acid another carbon dioxide is coming from conversion of isobutyryl coa into propionyl coa so now you, know, you need to know the fate of propionyl coa propionyl coa can be converted to succinyl coa propionyl coa to methyl melanyl coa and methyl melanyl coa is converted to succinyl coa succinyl coa gets into tca cycle 
and it can be used for energy purpose or it can be converted to glucose that's why oxidation of odd number car uh, sorry branched chain fatty acid especially the propionyl coa it can give rise to glucose in our body acetyl coa you know the fate of that acetyl coa gets into tca cycle and it can be completely burned down into carbon dioxide or if the tca cycle is saturated it can be converted to ketone bodies so this is all about oxidation of branched chain fatty acid that is phytonic acid just to quickly review that we get phytonic acid from fermentation of chlorophyll in ruminant animals intestine by the bacterial fermentation you get uh, chlorophyll is converted to phytol and phytol is converted to phytonic acid phytonic acid so it will become part of human body whenever human like uh, person consumes milk and milk product or ruminant animals meat when the phytonic acid has to undergo oxidation it has to be processed in the mitochondria uh, peroxisomal matrix only thing is initial beta oxidation cannot go on so initially it has to be processed by alpha oxidation this will be done by phytonic acid hydroxylase enzyme now phytonic acid hydroxylase is going to oxidize alpha carbon and that will be ultimately uh, uh, giving rise to removal of primary carboxyl group here as carbon dioxide it this is how phytonic acid is converted to pristinic acid once you get pristinic acid so regular beta oxidation can go on and that will remove alternatively propionyl coa acetyl coa propionyl coa like that once the fatty acid reaches 8 to 10 carbon atoms it will be shifted to mitochondrial matrix and regular beta oxidation can go on there and give rise to alternate acetyl coa propionyl coa and at the end you get isobutyl coa overall oxidation of pristinic acid you get 3 propionyl coa 3 acetyl coa and 1 isobutyl coa and isobutyl coa ultimately converted to 3 uh, one of the propionyl coa there so total in total we have four propionyl coa 3 acetyl coa and one carbon dioxide coming from pristinic acid and if you consider phytonic acid you get one carbon dioxide from phytonic acid into pristinic acid this is all about the question and in brief about oxidation of phytonic acid i hope it uh, this video helped you little more in understanding the branched chain fatty acid oxidation thanks for watching if you like the video give thumbs up and for regular update you can consider subscribing to my channel so that you get updates and notification in your email have a good day